Continuing our series of 2024 positional rankings, team by team, division by division, how do position groups rank around the NFL? Offensive line, we finished up the week last week. We're going into quarterbacks, the guys that are being protected by those offensive lines and how those quarterbacks might be affected by the offensive line around them. Is your quarterback elite tier one or complete garbage tier five? We'll get into it on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody so much for making this your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Love our everydayers. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. And it's okay if you pause for a second, hit that subscribe because we really appreciate it. Helps us out tremendously. Uh, today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. And use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Uh, speaking of, real quick, Matt, of being helped out tremendously. Big shout out to Ross who jumped in for me late in the week. Had to get out of town and um, and take care of some some family business. And Joe Marino jumping in as well on Friday. Those were fantastic shows. I listened to them when I was traveling back here home uh, to get back and do some shows with you this week. So appreciate you, Matt. Uh, getting that done and, and Ross jumping in as he always does for us here on the network. And it was uh, really nice to kind of listen to this podcast instead of always be the one talking during this podcast. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And unfortunately it looks like we might have a little bit more of a tumultuous next week or two as well. I'm going to be, I have one more vacation planned and then I move into Steelers training camp and then I'll be up there full time basically. And then I'm full go, you know, lock the doors. Don't see anybody anymore. So along those lines, you had a great idea. I mean, you were listening to the O-line episode Ross and I did, and we put them in three categories. Put them in above average, average, below. And we don't have to get super specific with O-line. Your backup left guard's not good enough, you know. So, But I thought you had a great idea. And, like, let's take – let's expand it even further. Let's do five categories. You know, basically great, good, average, below average, poor, you know, give or take. You know, five categories as opposed to three and then when we, you know, ESPN put out their quarterback ranks today and we were thinking about talking about that, but let's just kind of do our own. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, this position's a lot different than any other. Maybe depending how the rest of the summer goes, we'll do another one that is today. I just want to do how good is your quarterback situation, your know, position right now, just like we did O-line where another one I want to talk about, like how good is your quarterback situation? You know, so the Bears would, would grade much ha or much better in the second one than the first one, as would the Vikings or the Patriots, because the situation's pretty good. But if I got to line up in week one with what I have, it's not going to rank super high. You know what I mean? Because they're basically they're totally unknowns and they're rookies. And I don't even care about the situation. You know, if it's a great quarterback, but he has nothing around him, I still want to grade them above average or good or, you know. And I do love what ESPN does uh, with the, you know, speaking to executives and coaches around the league and putting together a list that way. We're going to go through and yeah. just go position or team by team uh, through the divisions in the NFL with our rankings here, as you guys did with the offensive line. Uh, but we'll wait maybe for Sando's article, right? Yeah, Sando's that's kind out. of the originator of that thing, talking yep. to executives. So we'll wait for the Sando tiered list and see how close our tiers are, not knowing what the Sando list, where he talks to all the execs and coaches around the league about his tier of quarterbacks. And which brings us to the AFC East and the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen is number one. And how heavily are you going to rank the, the backup quarterback in these situations is my, I question. think it needs with, mentioned with the, the quarterback like Josh Allen. It doesn't matter much, but you get to a team like say uh, the Minnesota Vikings who might be starting mm -hmm. their backup. Maybe it's a little bit more important when we're looking at, and this is for 2024. Yeah. Again, we're talking about today. How good is your situation today? I don't care about your money. I don't care about your age. I don't care about your injury history. You're like, you're ready to go. We're playing a game today, basically. And obviously, 
Kirk Cousins wouldn't be able to dress today and play, but I'm going to assume he's ready for week one. You know what I mean? So, so right. there's, there's a little bit of gray area. But obviously the Bills are great. I'm not going to do this for every team or we wouldn't even bother having the next podcast, but they'd be a little less in terms of quarterback situation yeah. because Allen's expensive and I think Trubisky's really bad, you know? So maybe Houston would be ahead of them where in the real world, we're just put, or for now, we're just putting them at great. They're in tier right. Which quarterback. Do you want in 2024? Josh Allen right is in, in, in the elite category of quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, I want to go to Aaron Rodgers next. Where is Aaron Rodgers for you and the New York Jets when it comes to the quarterback position this year? They've been one of the most awful teams in the league at quarterback. I don't know if Hall of Fame MVP caliber Aaron Rodgers is going to show up at the age of 40 post Achilles injury, but he's got to be better than. Tim Boyle and uh, Zach Wilson, right? So, uh, well, yeah. I just don't know exactly what category to put or what tier to put the New York Jets quarterback situation in currently in twenty twenty. Because obviously, he just added another year. He's coming off a major injury. Frankly, his last season in Green Bay wasn't quite as good as the MVP ones before that. So, I mean, he's going to be, you know, starting into his forties. Still going to give him a good, you know, a, a tier two type. I mean, ASPN still had him in their top 10. I don't know that I would have, but he deserves that kind of respect. I agree. I think that's where he's got to go until he shows that he's not a top quarterback in the NFL anymore. And Right, uh, right, right. You know, the arm's not hurt. Uh, the you know the brain say what you want about some of the stuff he said publicly about whatever it is and uh, the uh, the hallucinogens or whatever you know stuff he's doing in the in the dark the dark caves and all that um, but you know as far as knowing the game of football that's never been in question for him so until the 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 head and the arm are in trouble I'm not super worried about the Achilles right now as long as it's it's to the point where he's cleared and it looks like everything is is going as planned for him this season with the New York Jets and and hopefully for the Jets, it, it turns out what they expected him to be for them last year. I'm not willing to put him in the end of career Ben, Breeze, last we saw Rivers, last week last we saw Ryan category yet, because he's never looked like that guy yet. But it might be tomorrow. Who knows? It's hard with age, because sometimes it's yeah. like, oh, well, they fell off the cliff. Like, you knew they were close to the cliff, but you just never know when that player falls off the cliff. And you saw it with Ben Roethlisberger, right? right? All of a sudden, it was like, oh, no. This is bad quarterback play. Yep. He's not the most talented guy in the field anymore. And right. it's, it's got balls going to come out quick and everybody knows it. And nobody's going to be kind to you, you know, right. All right, here we go. Uh, AFC East, New England Patriots next. And I know they're in a, a rebirth at the quarterback position, a rebirth sort of as a franchise here. So this is always going to be hard when it comes to the teams with rookie quarterbacks. I'm going below average. I'm not going to put them poor because I think Jacoby Brissett's pretty darn good. And I expect him to start the season. May does carry some weight here because we're going to see him, and I love them coming out, but I expect a lot of growing pains for him. But Brissett's not just the – like I'm putting Brissett over a Minshew or a true placeholder. I think Brissett can win you some games. Yeah, and so, you know, below average, some people might get mad and saying, look, we got a good stopgap, and who knows, maybe Drake May is the next superstar. And hopefully for the Patriots, mm -hmm. you know, he becomes the, the rookie version in 2024 of what C.J. Stroud was in 2023. Hard to maybe. project that with the receiving group, although we thought the Texans receiving group was bad, and then all of a sudden they're giving big contracts out to guys after mm -hmm. uh, after last season. Uh, so maybe there's more there, potentially a couple of rookies. You know, offensive line, it's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more difficult – transition for drake may than it was for cj stroud last oh, yeah. year even if he turns out to be a great quarterback and in and most the, weeks, and the situation is much better than where it's at today you know the yeah. podcast number two would treat this a lot differently than podcast number one you know absolutely but for 2024 more games than not the other team's gonna have a better quarterback so it has to be for me yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. And this is going to be the fun one. This is the one where we're going to get people. Let us know at Williamson NFL on Twitter, at BD Peacock, or in the YouTube comments, the final team in the AFC East, Tua Tonga Vailoa, Miami Dolphins. Where, what tier is that quarterback room, Matt? I think he's going to be my hardest one. And I haven't thought through each one. I'm just kind of reacting as we go through them. And I kind of vowed to myself to grade harshly. You know, like not every, you can't be, 20 guys that are good or great, you know, because then average doesn't mean anything. But I'm going to put Tua in the good category. I bet he's my worst good as opposed to average. He would have been my best average. 
But for, to be very honest, and this is going to apply to your Niners, this whole system quarterback thing, I'm not going to hold it as a negative right now because that's the system. That's the quarterback. You're running the system. Yeah. Right. I mean, okay. that's interesting because the way you started to preface it, I yeah. actually wrote him down in tier three and scribbled it out and put tier two because I thought where you were going is you're going to say, yeah, you know, try to my system, little bit. as far as quarterbacks go, he's going to go mid tier, mid quarterback. But how he plays in the system for you puts him in the good category because he's playing good quarterback for the right. Miami. Yeah. If you asked him to be Josh Allen, he'd be below average, but no one's asking that. So I can't, I'm not going to that fantasy world. All right. We're continuing on. We're going to hit every team, every division. What tier is each quarterback room in the NFL in 2024? Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time, and we've got a special offer for buying tickets to your next football game at Game Time. In fact, any sporting event you want, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier, and prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and Game Time's lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets, NFL tickets. You want to go see a comedy show, concert, rolling into town, any theater events near you, find those tickets on the Game Time app. You see the view from your seat. It's uh, you, you pull it up on the app. It's, it's ridiculous how awesome it is. You know exactly not only just a photograph of what the seats are going to look like. It's panoramic. You look around as if you're there sitting in the seats. You know exactly what you're going to get before you buy. And no hidden fees. At checkout. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Here we go. Let's stay in the East and go with the Dallas Cowboys and uh, Dak Prescott, obviously the starter there, and they're pretty stocked through the uh, entire quarterback room. You got a young, completely unknown, talented former number three pick who started a few games and is going to get a big opportunity in training camp, which is going to make those preseason games, I think, a lot more fun uh, for me personally, at least, to watch with great interest for the Dallas Cowboys, Trey Lance, and the guy who's been a really solid backup for when uh, Dak Prescott has missed games and won some games for the Dallas Cowboys and Cooper Rush. So if you're talking one, two, three, might not be a deeper quarterback room in the NFL. Yeah, and I'm a Dak supporter. I mean, he was second in MVP voting last year. I mean, to me, that screams great, but there also seems like there's something missing, you know, and I don't know that it's all his fault. I'm going to put him in the good category, but him and Tua are probably the opposite spectrums of the good ca category. You know, one's probably the lowest of the goods. One's probably the highest of the goods. So I can't quite go great. New York Giants. New York Giants. We've got Daniel Jones as the starter. They brought in yeah. Drew Locke this offseason. Tommy DeVito in the house. Um I hate this wider or I hate this quarterback room. Yeah. Uh, I would probably, and I don't want to color your opinion. I already wrote down what I'm doing. I, 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 this is tier five for me. I, I think it I'm is too. Me. It is for me too. I mean, it, spoiler, I'm going to be really hard on the rookie groups, you know, just because it's really hard to be a rookie quarterback. And frankly, I think Dayball could get Daniel Jones to the tier four-ish guys, but, and he probably gets a little more heat than he deserves, but. As it stands right now, coming off an injury, he's poor. I mean, that, that room is poor. I can't wait to talk to Patricia Trina, the uh, host of Locked On Giants, about this. We've got her booked for a podcast in the very near future. Nice so nice tune nice in nice. there. And uh, I want to learn more about the process. And, you know, they're on the hard knocks, the offseason version, which has been really cool. So we're going to get a ton of insight about that build and about that team going into 2024. New York Giants with Patricia Trina coming up uh, on Peacock and Williamson very, very soon. All right. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles up next here in uh, in our team by team quarterback rankings tier one tier two. Where do you have Jalen Hurts in the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback room? Good, not great. Tier two. I mean, I'm a believer. I think he played through some injuries last year, but I don't think he's going to be in that tier one. I mean, I'm going to try to be pretty select with that group. This is a fun one to get some 
people fighting uh, with, with rivals in this group. By the way, Kenny Pickett, the backup now for uh, for Jalen Hurd. Can't forget about him. Tanner McKee, Will Greer, who I did not realize was still in the NFL, also oh, wow. in camp. It looks like with the Philadelphia Eagles. I uh, learned that just today. Um, if you just flipped Dak and Jalen Hurts, which team is helping? The more? Eagles win that trade. Okay, I really do. Yeah, yeah, and I'm that Hurts is. 10, 11 for me, you know, Dax, eight or nine for me. I mean, so we're not, it's not massive difference, but I, I thought you were going to say that. And I have no rooting interest there, but I think it's going to stir up some, I some bet it does in the comments section. So uh, let, let us know what you think about that one uh, amongst the bitter rivals. Um, I don't think that swap's going to happen like we saw with the Eagles adding the New York Giants star running back this offseason. So the, we don't have to worry about that if you're Dallas Cowboys fans. Uh, I think the, the Eagles are just happy with their with their quarterback situation. But I would tend to agree. I, I think that would be fascinating to see Dak quarterback the Eagles. Mm-hmm. I think top to bottom is a better football team, so it would help them out. And I think they're asked to do completely different things, too. So it would be hard run to the offense drop all of a sudden Jalen Hurts into Dallas. I think that's why it would be more difficult going that direction than Dak going to Philly. And I think if you gave true serum to A.J. Brown and Smith, they'd say, give me Dak. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> That's really spicy. Yeah, I think a little spice here on a Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Washington. I think this next one, Washington's going to cause some spice. I think. Oh, is it? Okay, where you at with Washington? You had uh, the New England Patriots in the below average tier four. What about Washington with their rookie quarterback that went one pick before? I'm going five, and it's not because I like May more than Daniels, and I do understand that his legs could be an equalizer. But I don't like what else is around. And the reason the Patriots were in four and not five is Brissett. I, I'm just a big Brissett fan. And da- I don't care about their situations. They're both bad. I'm just talking about how good is the quarterback room today. It's going to be Daniels. I think he's going to struggle just like everybody else. And I thought about putting him in below average instead of poor. But there's got to be some in the poor section. Right. So it's the it's it's the expectations for 2024 by itself. Mm-hmm. And Drake May is not going to be asked to be thrown in the fire right away like Jaden Daniels might be. Exactly. So Brissett, the veteran stopgap, plus maybe late season Drake May is probably going to be better quarterback play, more stable than a full season of rookie quarterback play from Jaden Daniels. As well. And I'm even looking at more for week one. Like if 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 I have to put the check mark, if, if Washington is playing New England in week one. I'm putting the check mark in the New England category if it's Bursette Bursette. Bursette. Yeah. Yeah. Burst Daniels. Maybe my tune would change by week four if Daniels is lighting things up. He might. History shows he probably will struggle. Some pretty good quarterbacks in the AFC North, starting with the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Uh, is this just an easy elite? Yes. Is this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a tier two? Or are you gonna are you gonna try to to tick off some uh, Baltimore Ravens fans? No, not at all. That, that's a tier one. He gets the great category. I read the ESPN write up today and found this interesting. Lamar and Tom Brady have the basically the exact same winning percentage in their career. Pretty good. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is a great stat. I like that a lot. Uh, well, how about Joe Burrow then in the Cincinnati Bengals? He's also in the great. Durability is my only concern, but I'm not right now. It looks like he's playing, so he's on the well, field. He's I great. Told you- what if I told you back up Jake Browning plays four games this year? I was impressed with them, but I still would have them probably in the good category as a team. You know, if I get 13 games of Burrow, I mean, I think they were like four and one when he was right last year. It wasn't that bad, right? Yeah. No, so, right. Yeah. Um, maybe they're still elite. All right. So we got the Cincinnati Bengals. At the These top. other two are kind of interesting, though. Well, the Cleveland Browns, I'm pretty sure, uh, if I had to guess, Matt, you're not super high on that quarterback room. I am not, but I'm going to put him in tier four for Watson. And I do think the other guys could potentially come into play for podcast number two. When we talk about quarterback situation, they would be rock bottom. Probably Maybe worth 64, the right? Yeah. It's like 64 million involved in this guy, but I'm, I can't put him at the tier five yet. And uh, this time last year, we at least had a little bit more hope. And there was like another season of weird Deshaun Watson and then, you know, injury. And then Dorian Thompson Robinson River was like a a superstar in preseason. But it sounds like he's like quarterback four for them now. They got brought in Tyler Huntley. 
uh, James Winston's there as well. So you don't have like the fun DTR storyline anymore. And there's not much hope there, unfortunately, even though, um, you know, you can't bury a guy after his rookie season. And who knows? Uh, you know, James Winston might be the one that finishes this season for the Cleveland Browns. Could be. Pittsburgh Steelers, where you at? Below average. I mean, just off the way Wilson and Fields have played. Wilson's going to be the starter. I think they could get to average. I mean, I think this this new scheme will help Wilson a lot more than the Denver scheme. And I'm not trying to be too homerist, but if I, if the Browns were playing the Steelers in week one, I think I'd put the check mark in Pittsburgh. Interesting. Okay. The, uh, the Matt Williamson, not high on the uh, Justin Fields, Russell Wilson combo, Kyle Allen. Don't forget Kyle Allen, by the way, who's yeah, uh, he's floating around too. in the house at, uh, at quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers going tier four below average. I'm trying to grade harsher than normal though. Yeah, that's okay. No, I mean, this it's an important position. If you're right, not good, right. then you're bad at the quarterback position in the NFL. We'll see which way that goes for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024. All right, NFC North, then the Souths in the West coming up next. How do we grade those quarterback rooms in 2024? Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Comparison is the thief of joy, and it's so easy to envy other people's lives. And you know what? It might look like Everyone else has it all together on their, you know, on their grams, on their social media. But in reality, they probably don't. And therapy can help you focus on what you want rather than, you know, what others have and what it might look like you should have. And start living your life and your best life instead of worrying about what's going on with everybody else and trying to compare yourself to what's really not even going on with everybody else. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your personal schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched to a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time as well for no additional charge. So stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. So I'll let you know here, Matt, and maybe we should wipe out one of the five tiers altogether. I, there's no mid-tier quarterbacks yet. There's no tier three guys. Everyone's either just a little above average, just a little below average. So I'm wondering if uh, if there is a, a middle class of quarterback in the NFL or just truly a have or have not league. Let's go to the NFC North and the Chicago Bears next. So I'm going to break a rule here and not put them at poor just because he's a rookie. And it's not because he has such a great supporting cast. All that's going to make his life easier. I just think he, Caleb Williams is a really, really good prospect that goes first overall most years. So I can't go poor. I'm going to go below average. So you're going tier four for the rookie quarterback. And uh, with, you know, I mean, it's hard to say a rookie quarterback is going to be better than below average. I'm I'm doing that as a favor. I almost put him in five, right? Yeah, especially early. If we're talking like, okay, who's this guy? Now. right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Jared Goff, Detroit Lions. How do you like this quarterback situation? <laughs> Obviously, Goff's going to play every snap. If he's healthy. They got Hendon Hooker, who they drafted as a third mm-hmm. rounder in 2023. Nate Sudfeld hanging out over there as well. But this is a let's be honest. This is a Jared Goff ranking. Low tier, good, much like Tua. I think his system helps him dramatically, but if I'm not going to hold that against Purdy and Tua, then we're going to talk about how you're going to play with what you got. And I think Goff is now above average. You've been harsh in some places. I think you've been a little bit kind in some places. I would have had Tua and Goff in my tier three. Looking at it, since nobody's in the average category, those are the two that are screaming to go from tier two to three if we had to fill that one, you know? And you know what's funny is uh, I don't know if you've been affected by this, Matt, but Dolphins fans and Lions fans have been some of the loudest when we're not as kind to their to their football teams. Oh, I hear. Yeah. Jordan Love, I've heard. Green Bay Packers, where are you at here? Easy tier two. I'm a believer. That's a compliment. He's in. And then the Minnesota Vikings, you got a rookie quarterback, and then you've got uh, the veteran sort of journeyman now who's still somewhat young in Sam Darnold who's likely going to start the beginning of the year at quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to go to five. Um, and I know that there's some Brissett comps there, you know, but in situations, but I like Brissett more than Darnold. 
I like May more than McCarthy. So it's that simple. And I've seen more. I trust Brissett more. And I still think Darnold could be a good player. I just haven't, don't know. I think if if there was a, uh, um, if you went to FanDuel and there was a betting line for which quarterback, if they played all 17 games, would have the better season between Jacoby Brissett and Sam Darnold, I would mm-hmm. put money on Sam Darnold. I understand that, but I just don't know. I can trust it yet. I, he's a lot more volatile, though. Yeah, than, exactly. Than Brissett. exactly. I think I know exactly what Brissett's going to be. I'm not sure what Sam Darnold's going to be. It could be pretty good. Uh, it could be fun. Uh, it could be a complete, you know, it's on fire disaster. But I I'd tr- have loved to see a month of him last year in, in Ninerland. Exactly. You know what I, mean? right. I, I, I trust the offense and the weaponry a lot more in Minnesota because I, I don't know what Alex offense even is going to be for yeah, yeah. the new England Patriots. Right. And the, the receiving group, just Justin Jefferson, I would trade, you know, Justin Jefferson alone for every single person on the offense for the new England Patriots. Yeah. Right. So uh, for that reason, that's why I would be a little bit higher on Minnesota than you are, especially compared to, you know, where you had the Brissett Drake may, New England Patriots. I hear you. It's a somewhat different conversation, but if May would have landed in Minnesota as opposed to New England, I would have liked his chance at long-term success a thousand times better. And he's still the same guy. It's not his Here's fault, an interesting know. one. We've seen one season and an awesome start to C.J. Stroud's career, Houston Texans quarterback room. What tier are they? Great. But I, it wouldn't shock me if he, t- he took such a huge step I don't know if he'll take another step forward. Like, it just rarely happens in the NFL, you know? He well, might end up your, being a top-tier two guy a, a year from now. If he's, but I love him. If he's already in your top tier, there's not there's nowhere to go but down. <laughs> right, true, true. So, But I think he earned that after that rookie year. Uh, no team more fascinating than the Indianapolis Colts, I think, this year. A huge make-or-break year. Anthony Richardson not only has to be good, he has to stay healthy and stay on the field and not let Joe Flacco come in and do what he did last year for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you got Sam Ellinger there as well. There's, you know, tons of talent. You got the, I love the receiver group there with Josh mm-hmm. Downs in the slot and the Donai Mitchell, the second rounder to go with Michael Pittman, who's going to be the tar- target hog on offense. And, you know, Alec Pierce is still there, second rounder from a couple years ago. And, um, you know, still a, a very good offensive line that has some uh, parts that have developed in, in recent years to hopefully go with Quentin Nelson and, and Ryan Kelly and those guys and, and, uh, and, and complete that starting five. So interesting year here and i don't know what to expect anthony richardson could be the next super duper star in the nfl or it could be drawing board time next year at this time for the uh for the indianapolis colts i'm gonna put them in my first average category tier three i mean i I think there's a lot of questions but i know he's hard to play against right now i I know that much about it's the, the so tier three is is like the i don't know what the hell to do with this yeah, we'll get to a couple I know exactly what to do with. In tier okay, three. okay. <laughs> uh, how about the Jacksonville Jaguars? I'm going to go tier two. With I still very much believe tier one capabilities. I'm a Lawrence apologist. Where are you at with the Tennessee Titans? Tier four. Well, I have that... major concerns about Levis, to be honest with you. Oh, I did not see enough to put him in average. I would rather play against Levis than Richardson today. Interesting. I, you know, I, I, I don't think I would fight you on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would rather I take I take my chances with Levis than than Richardson. Me too. Me too. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons and Kirk Cousins. I think they're still in a tier two, and Penix helps that as well. I mean, let's yeah. not forget that he's at least looming there. You know, I mean they they spent money in draft picks. They better be okay at at quarterback. And so when you're looking now in future, they're they're not in a bad situation with that position. Cousins was a pretty darn good player last time we saw him. Carolina Panthers, do you have some expectations for Bryce Young in year two? He played like a tier five, but I'm going to give him tier four with a year under his belt, pedigree, and I feel like I'm being generous. Projecting a a, a bump from being the the worst team in the NFL to just not being a disaster. A little more around him, you know, uh, but I think he can go from five to four. Derek Carr in the New Orleans Saints. That's that average guy all day there long. Is. There he is. All day long. This is the he's, Derek Carr tier. Yep. He's a lot different than Richardson, but he's that is what he is. 
he's going to stay there, whereas Richardson's going to leave this. He, he's going up or down. He's going to go either up or down from here. Carr's going to still be here next year. Yep, absolutely. Like a Cousins could fall to there, you know, with right. the, you know take a small step back or whatever. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers finishing up the NFC South here. Also average. AFC South is screaming average for me. Average division at, at, at best. Yeah. Mayfield played pretty well. Some hope, I guess, for for Baker to get up into the, the twos potentially, Ooh. but I, I would certainly not put him there, and I wouldn't expect him to be there. Yeah, I got to squint a lot to put him in the same tier as Dak Prescott. Do we need to have a, a, a sixth tier to put some other quarterbacks in when we start talking about the AFC West and Patrick Mahomes? Yes, but obviously he's in the number one. You know, right. we, can, we don't have to spend much time there, but he's obviously in the number one. Is that where Justin Herbert is? I said I'm in a great harsh, so I'm going to put him in tier two. But he's my first draft pick for sure out of tier two. Like him to take a few more chances. I mean, and step up a little in big games. But I don't love what's been around him, especially from a coaching and defense perspective. Yeah, uh, it, it, there is it is a pretty big year for mm -hmm. Justin Herbert uh, and where his uh, his quarterback tier future resides because most people love him but a lot of people point to a lot of reasons why uh, maybe he's potentially overrated and uh yeah i, I gotta believe he's a, gonna be a tier one guy but he can be my quarterback all day long but i can't put him with lamar and burrow and allen yeah i'm not gonna fight you on that one uh denver broncos they're definitely five however i think if we're just talking about today you could make the argument that Knicks gives you a better chance to win than May or Daniels or guys that were drafted ahead of them that I'd rather have three years from now, but maybe not today. But yeah, I think they have to be in five. Maybe more ready to play. But even yeah, then, yeah. I'm still like, <laughs> after one training camp in a couple of weeks, uh, maybe he's not even, maybe, that's our, maybe he's already been surpassed and, and other quarterbacks are more are more ready to play because they're just better. Possibly. Possibly. We'll see. Uh, and then the Las Vegas Raiders uh, is the last team in the AFC West. I know Minshew did good things, but I also thought they had to massage him like crazy. There were so many throws they couldn't even attempt or weren't in the playbook. So I can't even go below average on him. I'm going poor, and I don't think O'Connell is a start. Even you think, if he with him. I tend to think it's going to be O'Connell who wins the job. You think it's going to be Minshew? To start the season, I do. Mm -hmm. you know. Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals, man. Tough one. I lean towards good. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tier two, but sort of on the lower end, sort of a wild card. He was a tough eval last year because he came back from a massive injury on a terrible team. There's obvious talent. I'm gonna still go with tier two there, which is starting to be the the heaviest group here by far. Oh yeah, tier two is the biggest group, and I don't know if it could even be surpassed if all three of the rest of the quarterbacks no. go in a different tier. And I have a feeling there's more in this division. They're going to end up in tier two. Matthew Stafford and Los Angeles Rams. I'm putting him in tier one. Oh, here we go. I know that's kind of bold. Okay, I think he's a total superstar, and maybe he gets the Ben elbow end of career thing that would and that would be really sad. But, boy, he just rips the rose over the middle of the field, and he's my style all day long. And the system helps him, but the system helped Tua. The system helped Goff. It's not like Stafford was a bad quarterback in Detroit. Ever, ever. In the, right. When they were the worst organization in, yep. in the league, or maybe second worst. I, he's number one in the NFC for me. Wow. So Stafford ahead of Rodgers? Hurt. Yeah. Hurts? Dak. Dak. Herbert? Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a little bit of a spicy one. It's I a little bold. At William C. In the fellow on Twitter. Let's, yeah, let's let me know. Let me know. Hey, drop us drop us a comment in the in uh the YouTube comments there. Uh Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith. That's another average for me. Okay. I don't think he's just a fun little project that a backup that's playing well. He's got a lot of tools. He plays hard too. I mean, I'm not saying he's Stafford, but he rips throws. I like the way he plays. But I don't think you could put him in tier two. So if if Tua and Dak and um, you know Kyler Murray are tier two quarterbacks, then Brock Purdy clearly a tier one for you, right, Matt? Can I put that in ink or? Oh no, he's two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think him and Tua and Goff are aided by their environment, but 
I think as you know better than anyone, there's a lot to be said for Purdy versus Jimmy. You know what I mean? Like they're night and day to me. I mean, Purdy's such a better playmaker. He's so much more aggressive and he does a lot on his own. And the more I watch him, the more I think he would be good everywhere. Not as good, but he'd be good pretty much anywhere he was at. He's an NFL starter, you know. You got six tier one quarterback rooms Mm -hmm. in KC, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Buffalo, Houston, uh, Los Angeles Rams. And 17 total, one and two. So uh, above average, you have 17. So pretty close. You got 17 above average. Uh, You got four teams in the mid. And then, you know, the rest of the teams in the NFL below average at quarterback Mm -hmm. in the NFL. So half the league above average and uh, half the league below that. And there's a lot of volatility. You know, we might have this conversation at Halloween. I'd be like, oh, Jaden Daniels might be a tier two guy. You know, like a year ago, I would have put Stroud today in tier five. If I told you that Goff and or Tua, let's just put them together, Goff and Tua, because those are the ones that people argue about the most. Mm-hmm. Maybe even just Tua by himself, because that, that's really one of the big ones. Tua is tier three. Let's say that, okay? Okay. He was my closest one to tier three if, of all the tier twos. If Tua's tier three, does Goff still remain above him in tier two? Uh, Purdy, you could ask that same question, or are they all in the same tier no matter what? If I say this player has to be in this tier, would you just immediately snap other quarterbacks in that tier with them? Perhaps, but two would be the easiest one to convince me. But I did say, I mean, there's uh, my categories weren't how good a football player were he, you know, like they're all free agents and I get to pick one for my Steelers. That's different than how good their quarterback situation is today to win NFL games on their year to go. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're grading these team quarterback rooms. Mm -hmm. How good are they at quarterback as we lead into the season? All right. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.